we are team three. In this week, we are looking at a specific question on how to present results to engineers, public, decision makers, how to address uncertainties, challenges, and practical demonstrations. This is a way to plan on how we distribute our, our tasks. These are some main points we had to answer questions, which are, why is it important to be able to communicate results and topics? What is the main message of communication? How to approach the different categories of people, taking into consideration the level of understanding of each category? And to tackle this question, we separate into three categories, engineering, and decision makers, to help us understand how to, how to reach this question and for you to give understand too. Okay, for the engineers, uh, since we are all kinds of engineers, so what about you thinking about the, what kind of main information you want to know since when we represent the results to you? Uh, in our opinion, uh, we think we are more caring about the original data resource and the, the methodology we use to generate the map and uh, the assumption during we set up the model. So, uh, engineers, we think they need more details. I would like to show one example we found on the world resource of the United States. Of course, there are a lot of uh, a uh, similar website in European country, but uh, since we don't understand the local language, we take the US uh, website as an example. Uh, in this website, you can uh, see clearly uh, the current flood uh, situation around the whole country. And you can see from the legend, uh, there are some uh, major flooding, uh, refers to the purple uh, point and uh, <coughs> different color uh, present the different flood issues. Um, maybe it's more uh, very clear to the public as well, but at the same time, uh, you can uh, access the data from this website. You can get uh, a lot of uh, the original data, uh, how to generate this map, uh, if you click the menu at the site. Also, if you want to go to the specific location, you want to check the water uh, flood uh, situation in uh, one location, you can click the, uh, each point to get the more specific uh, uh, data, like the hydrograph, like the discharge peak uh, in this website. So we think this is a good example for engineers uh, to get the more details uh, of the results. Of course, uh, there are some uncertainties we need to present to the engineers as well. Uh, since they, uh, the, the, uh, when we uh, generate the flood map, uh, when we put the, put, it, put the data into the model, uh, we need to consider if the, if the data is available or not. Uh, take the uh, 1994 flood as an example. Uh, since the soil type is not that, uh, uh, we couldn't get the, exactly the soil type data from uh, anywhere. So it may be a need, needs our uh, assumption uh, later when we set up the model. And uh, if we got this data, uh, we need to think about if this data reliable or not. Um, also, the modeler should choose the software we use. It refers to the mathematical equations or the numerical uh, uh, methods. Um, since uh, I mentioned before, if the data is not available, we need to make some assumptions during the model setup. Now, now we are talking about the uh, public part. Uh, we want to present uh, public people. To, uh, we have to aware them about the floods and infer, uh, infer them what we have already done in the before to protect their own safety. And also, we teach them how to take a further step to uh, protect their own properties uh, to prevent all the things. And after all, we can show the people more what we are developing in a few, in now or in the future, uh, to prevent the flood occurring or to make uh, people understand more about flood. Uh, for example, uh, this week.
we, we saw the visual reality that shows the flood things. Uh, we can use that to make people understand where they live or where the flood occurred. And on this page, uh, we show the people uh, 3D flood pictures. Now we can see the below one is when the flood occurs, we can easily see the bridge is gone and half of the house are covered. That people living there can understand what would happen if the flood occurred. And we have also the video we found on the web. Uh, it's a uh, Mike 21 simulations in Korea. It shows uh, time by time when the flood is coming, which area would be affected at the first time. Then next, uh, this one is like the flood, flood map we generate from Hecras. Yeah, uh, from Hecras, it shows the water depth time by time. So, but for public, we couldn't understand what it will be like for the water depth. You can only give them numbers. So we put also a real life video to show them um, what will the real life when the water around one meter depth occur. It will be like this. Uh, this video is from Bar River and it's around one meters.
big uh, red flame uh, uh, event. Um, so this is this is kind of a map we, we can show to the public um, and also to decision makers. But as I said, they will more focus on the cost and on this kind of map. You will have to tell them after showing the map what will be the cost of the flow. So it's more made for the public than decision makers and for engineers. It's not enough because we, you you won't tell enough about the data and the hypothesis you took. So it's more more for the public. This one is also for the public. Uh, if I ask you if you prefer as a public and not engineer, if you prefer this kind of presentation or this, which one do you prefer? I think that you will choose the first one because this is more a catching. Uh, if you are living in a city, if you find a, a map, if you have something uh, if, that shows that there will be there will be water on the streets, I'm sure that you won't take your car. So this is more eye-catching for the public because they will more understand if you show to them pictures, real pictures of what happened, what can happen, than if you just show them some text and this is this is unreadable. And this is really what uh, what was made uh, in, uh, in in the U.S. for the public. Uh, so so we can say without any troubles that it's better to show to the public the pictures like that. Like uh, conclude the, to compare the three kinds of people, what they really need. Uh, first, the engineers they are more focused on data, the methodology, and uncertainties. But uh, for the public, they just uh, focus on what kind of influence on their life if the flood occurs. Uh, like uh, if the transportation people, the will change or not, or the, any threatens for their properties. Um, for decision maker, it depends on what kind of decision maker they they are. Uh, some of them may be more caring about the benefits and money, and some of them may be more caring about uh, the social influence or the political recognition. Um, there are some challenges depend, uh, uh, among these three kinds of people. For engineers, uh, we need the, some science-based uh, data to show them to persuade, to uh, be more persuasive uh, because they have uh, uh, enough knowledge to uh, question uh, relevant uh, question to us. Uh, but for the public, uh, the challenge also, uh, the challenge is they have no back, uh, maybe they don't have uh, much uh, background of the flood, so we need to prepare the, uh, all kinds of questions. Uh, to uh, answer them. Uh, for decision makers, because they need uh, to get something good decision uh, from our results, we also uh, need them to trust us to uh, pay something uh, if they take our results. So it's kind of a win-win situation. Um, also, uh, the medium to, trans uh, to present the result to different groups of people are different. Uh, for engineers and decision makers, we maybe just uh, gather a meeting uh, to show our uh, result. But for the public, we couldn't gather all whole uh, people around the city. So maybe we can choose the cell phone or social media like newspaper uh, or radio uh, uh, website or smartphone app to generate our result. Um, also, the communication skills uh, is different to different people. Uh, the engineers is more sensitive about the data, and uh, we can use the engineering language to describe it to them. But for the public, we need to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, or we can add some joyful interaction, and uh, maybe it's better. But for the decision maker, we because they don't have uh, much time, uh, they are always busy. Uh, the point is to straight to the point. Uh, the uh, straight to the point we want to show them, but in a serious way, so they they, they won't feel that we are uh, wasting their time. And uh, this is uh, the references we use for this week's task. And thank you. Okay. Uh, I think we, we have several questions. Can you come back to the to the to the previous slide? Yes. Just uh, yes. Okay. This one. Uh, is there anyone of, the, of your team who has been already in a public meeting about any project where flooding was 
the topic. No. Is there anyone in the room who has been already in a public meeting about flooding? Yes? You in the back? No? Yes? No? No? Okay. No one? Yes? No, no, I was asking to the student. No one? Okay, for those who have been there, so Sven, can you tell us uh, what was the profile of the people attending the public meeting? And if they were looking for joyful interaction? <laughs> Uh, I think some of them were, uh, the kind of comments were they thought uh, they were there to have a little bit of fun and to make fun of uh, the regional government which was giving the presentation. Okay, just to make the things a little bit more clear. If you take the example of the PPRI map you have seen from Nice, you have three colors. You have white, blue and red. If you are in the red zone, you do not have the right to do anything in your house. You cannot even sell it. Okay? You have lost your property because you are in a floating zone. So, suppose now you are going to a public meeting where you are presenting the results of the study. Who will be the people in the room? The people who are in the white zone where they are safe and they can really enjoy life? Or the people who are on the red zone? Red zone, for sure. Do you think they will be friendly? <laughs> Because for sure, if they are on the edge of the blue and the red, they would say, hey, why do you put me on the red? Why not I'm not blue? How could you justify your results? How confident are you with the quality of your results? How confident are you with the mapping you are producing? You know, by 20 meters, you are just destroying the property of the people. Okay? And obviously, no one in the room will be ready to believe in your results. You will have people who will say, this is fake. This is just propaganda. You are paid by the municipality. You are just pushing the propaganda of the municipality. That will be the reality of the meeting. And I'm not talking about the social media. I'm not talking about the yellow jacket. I'm not talking about the other things. No, but I mean, so it may create a kind of reaction which is absolutely not rational. So the question is, how do you communicate uncertainty on your results to the public, to the engineers, I understand, to the decision makers a little bit, but to the general public, I think this is a key issue. Stefan, you want to say something about, you get different view about users of big infrastructures. I mean, for the our users. Uh, of course, we have uh, similar discussions uh, from the point of view of Port Authority. I'm not so much involved uh, in discussions concerning flooding, but more in discussions um, concerning your port is destroying nature, and we as an agriculture we need to sacrifice our land and make new nature. Um, and I can tell you, indeed, those are not uh, very pleasant uh, discussions, and, and, and they are really, even if you try to convince them that you're trying to be objective and trying to be as, as, as correct as you, as you can, they do not believe you and they will do anything to, uh, yeah, to, to give you indeed the, the, the label of fake news and, and, and you are just manipulating us and we do not believe you. And, and I think what is very important is that also us, because very often, uh, it's my team, and very often they, they, they say, we as an engineer, we should realize that if it is you as an applicant who is living there and in your house, you would have the same reaction, right? And I think that's also very important to, to, to have in mind that yeah, when you're talking about properties of people that have to sacrifice for a certain goal, and it must be very clear what is the certain goal, that it's not just for fun, but it is really, it has a real meaning and it's really for safety and for a higher goal that you sacrifice this. So we, we, we talk about that, the, the uncertainties for the public. We think we uh, want to treat uh, the uncertainties as the probabilities to publics. To like uh, uh, our the weather forecasting uh, app, they give the percentage, uh, percentage of how much uh, probability uh, they're going to rain tomorrow. So. Uh, we also can give the public 
how much probability they're gonna rain. Yeah, but you, 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 you understand that at the very end, when you produce your model, the people will have to define a map. And the map, it will be blue or red. The people who will sign the map will be the decision makers, for sure. They will sign, they will say, okay, this is a map. Now, if your model is putting two houses on the red side and not anymore on the blue side, uh, of course, the people who will be in the red will react. Okay? So, if you come and you say, I've got an uncertainty which is about half a meter, for example, if you reduce this by half a meter, maybe those two houses are moving from the red side to the blue side. And then you may enter the situation that inhabitants may go to look for a company, a consultant, for producing a new analysis in order to fight with you. In order to demonstrate that your models, your results, were wrong. And they are not anymore in the red side, but they are in the blue side. Kostya, do you want to say something on that? Um, yeah, very interesting presentation. Yeah, just to turn to this, uh, that uh, it's very important to describe all these uncertainties, right, and be ready to be challenged on this. And as Professor Philip just mentioned, that you know, uh, they potentially, you know, people in this red zone can take the council of various responsible to court and basically find another consultant to you know, with the modeling. So if that is totally different from what you've done, or, you know, someone potentially you are in 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 a you know, in a shower, then you have a third consultant, you know, then you will lose your professional reputation as well. So it's model is probably you know they don't take sides but you know, it is lose uh, your your professional you know, impression that you make on people. So the reason I think for not in the public meeting, but at white power uh, uh, modeling, and they were rechecking somebody else's modeling. And that's something to do with the development in the area. And the environment agency doesn't want to give them a permit because they know that the has been approved by the models and uh, there are lots of challenges. Okay. So the presentation of uncertainties is important, but also doing the job uh, as good as possible and being ethical really is, is, is important. Not just thinking, oh, this parameter is not important to have some. That's it. And there are real people living in these houses, so they want, you know, they want to be able to sell them if they can or you know, have some use. So, yeah. Just as the microphone passes me, just a comment that I'm just wondering about. If, um, if you're dealing with an area where there, has, where there is a history of flooding, where people um, are familiar with flooding and, and, and know that floods reach certain levels, Maybe the task is a little easier uh, than in, in a place where there hasn't been a flood for 20 or 30 years and um, people have forgotten uh, what happens. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just a few, few comments. At the beginning, I saw you may focus on the, how to communicate to the, to the engineer and public and the decision makers at the time. To be honest, I'm quite confused about your, your presentation. And you give a lot of the examples in the US, uh, but I may just comment. I may suggest to, to review what you have, the presentation Tuesday from Mr. Yannick. Okay, he gave the presentation about the management. And uh, you, you, can, you can have a quick review about this presentation, and you may know that how to communicate with the public and decision makers also the engineers. Okay, thank you very much. Let's move to the last two teams, so the team number nine, please.
And you try to, because, uh, as a polarized here. It's because we don't see you anymore. So. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome to the presentation of Group 9. <coughs> this week our problem is uh, the uh, resilience estimation for uh, two, diff uh, two uh, peak flag in uh, this area. And uh, for this uh, resilience estimation, uh, uh, the, this is our uh, outline for sorry, for this presentation. Uh, first, uh, I will talk about uh, something uh, about the resilience uh, uh, generally means and uh, what are the flood bricks. And then my team members uh, will uh, talk about uh, methodology results and conclusion. Uh, first, um, uh, what is the flood risk? Uh, the general definition uh, is uh, the product of uh, probability of flooding uh, is, uh, uh, is the and associated uh, certain loss as uh, a simple definition. And uh, for resilience, okay, uh, there is no uh, uh, general definition, uh, but uh, uh, one definition from United Nations uh, International Strategy for. Uh, Reaction, it says the resilience is uh, uh, the capacity of a system uh, uh, to adapt by resisting, either resisting or uh, changing uh, to uh, reach uh, or maintain a certain level of uh, uh, functioning uh, and structure. So uh, now the other question is: uh, so fight against flood or uh, live with flood? So uh, from uh, First, uh, uh, we saw uh, we, we know that uh, uh, people always uh, try to fight against flood. Fight against uh, flood means uh, the classical uh, classical uh, flood risk management, uh, which includes uh, dikes, walls, uh, different kind of uh, defensive structures. And uh, now it's a uh, sound distance that live with floods. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means uh, uh, we have to accept a certain level uh, of flooding uh, because uh, flood cannot be prevented. Uh, so uh, uh, it's better uh, uh, flood risk management uh, based on uh, resilience. Uh, this means uh, risk awareness, uh, flood uh, preparedness, uh, land use control. And uh, here I summarized uh, uh, some differences uh, between uh, uh, flood risk uh, management with uh, the classical strategies and uh, between uh, flood risk management uh, based on uh, resilience strategies. So uh, for the uh, classical uh, method, uh, it's uh, only consider uh, 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 one safety level, which means uh, 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 by using one safety level, uh, actually, uh, we are uh, protecting all the area. We actually don't know which area will be actually flooded. We actually protect all whole area. And uh, uh, in this uh, strategy, uh, little uh, attention is given to the consequence of possible floods. In case uh, uh, any floods uh, with uh, surplus uh, or design structures, uh, it doesn't consider these consequences. And uh, every every time a new bigger flood comes, you uh, have to raise the structure and please uh, uh, restrict the natural dynamics of river system and uh, spoil uh, landscape qualities. On the other side, uh, resilience uh, based uh, flood risk management uh, is uh, uh, actually uh, giving uh, living uh, with floods uh, with uh, impact minimization. First, the impact. And then, uh, uh, with uh, this includes uh, design of the uh, warning system and evaluation plan, and etc. And uh, so, also includes uh, and one of the important things uh, in this resilience based study is uh, in case of any bigger flood, what is the uh, some uh, strategy to recover uh, for this damage. Uh, 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 we, uh, uh, we found this uh, methodology uh, 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 with, uh, is, with adding resilience to uh, flood, uh, flood management uh, is uh, uh, from uh, uh, European and supported projects. Uh, these uh, five uh, R, 
uh, which is uh, very important uh, for this uh, uh, resilience uh, for flood management. Okay, for uh, estimation of uh, resilience, um, actually the, we have to uh, identify what are the uh, disturbance uh, and identify uh, which system attributes are being, will be, distur uh, be disturbed. Uh, these are uh, some examples like housing, classing, uh, my uh, other uh, colleagues will explain uh, the methodology in detail. So uh, uh, for our problem, uh, we, uh, the main focus is uh, to estimate the resilience uh, using this uh, flood resilience index, uh, which is uh, developed uh, during this COPO, uh, project. And uh, for this also we need to prepare the hydrograph that uh, is also we have to consider uh, uh, Chita, uh, Chita 500 meter cube and then another is uh, 5000 meter cube. So for this, uh, from this uh, peak flow uh, we generated um, a flood map uh, for further calculation of uh, flood resilience index. And, uh, Uh, so the first task is to create our flood map. So to that we choose uh, the software Hydra, which is a 2D um, new mathematical model, uh, hybrid model. Uh, is based on the 2D Santana equation, so you can see there. Um, the first part of our work is uh, to change our field data. So uh, we have a DEM, but the trouble is that uh, we have a DSM for a digital surface model, and we want a DTM for a digital terrain model. The difference between uh, them is that uh, DSM uh, will take the, the elevation of buildings, and the DTM will, will take the land elevation. So in our case, it's mm, very uh, a problem. Uh, by example, uh, here uh, in. Uh, we are in Nice, in the Lamanda and Napoleon Free Bridge. Uh, you can see that our, D, uh, our D, DEM uh, is that uh, the, the two uh, bridges have an elevation of, of 19 and the VAR channel has an elevation of 9. So if you compute a model with it, it's not good. So uh, what, we do, what we did is to uh, change it using uh, AppMap. And you can see that it's a mesh of uh, our model, neighbor. So in the first one, uh, we have the, the two bridges uh, with a large mesh size. And the second one, we just uh, change our data to, to get uh, a real uh, channel. So uh, first, uh, first part in, in neighbor is to uh, create some polygons. And we will define uh, polygons with uh, different land cover. For each land cover, we will get uh, a manning's value for the roughness and also the mesh size. The size of the mesh will depend on how precise we want to be. By example, in the sea, we, we took a very large mesh size because we don't very really need uh, this information about the sea. But in the river, we want to be very precise, so we took a very uh, short size. Uh, then we, we also took the inlet and the outlet of the of the model. Uh, then we use our GM that we just uh, modify a bit, and we uh, create our, our mesh. Uh, then we inject uh, the two two hydrograph uh, that we create la last week with EKHMS uh, with uh, the two uh, different uh, peak. Of, uh, of water. Uh, then uh, we compute and we have the boss map. So uh, as you can see, uh, the, 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 the flood map for 3,500 cubic meters second is uh, less uh, less, exp uh, less large than the 5,000 uh, so, uh, cubic meters second. We export uh, from that on Argus. Files are in uh, ASCII uh, format. The inconvenient is uh, that we don't have uh, uh, attribute table, and we can uh, join uh, directly uh, with uh, the layer of urban, urban function layer. However, the, the layer is composed 
um, the pixel with the value values. Uh, the value the value corresponds uh, uh, to the water depth. Thus, uh, we are we convert uh, the ASCII to points. Donc, uh, it's represent, uh, represented on the picture. Uh, to, to better understand, uh, let's take uh, the flood map with the, uh, with the urban function layer. Uh, the goal is uh, to intersect uh, these points uh, with the building, the building and to inform uh, the water depth uh, of uh, each uh, polygon. So um, each polygon is defined, uh, defined uh, by one function, like education, governance, <coughs> leisure, etc. We want to know the resilience of uh, each uh, building. That is why uh, we add uh, FRI. So um, we add uh, the flow map. The FRI has been uh, determined by uh, Ryan. I'd like him uh, to describe this part. So uh, once the map of fluid parcel obtained, we could uh, apply to it the fluid residence indexes, so FR, that are an evaluation of uh, fluid residence in a city. Uh, here, here we focus to assess residence at parcel, parcel scale, uh, the parcel being a set of, of buildings. And uh, in this method, each building, each parcel, sorry, uh, is defined by its typology, housing, working, health, uh, food, etc., and depends on services that provide uh, connectivity and allow functionality between uh, between urban functions. Uh, so those dependencies are listed here. So energy, water, waste, communication, transport, etc. So they are external and internal. And our work consisted to evaluate how much a particular dependency is available during a particular event of flood. So we evaluate <coughs> between 0 and 5. 0 uh, means that the requirement is not available during the, the flood, and 5 means that it is fully available. Uh, so let, let's take an example. Um, we are here interested in uh, the category housing. For, for the water depth of, of 10 centimeters, and uh, and in this case we could suppose that there is no uh, no interruption for the, the provision of energy. So we put five in we put five here in uh, the requirement column, and we proceed, we proceed the same way for each requirement. Then we we attributed weights to those dependencies in order to evaluate the relative importance uh, in the U part in the human function. So that's this column. And finally, uh, the assessment of the availability and the, the importance of each dependency of a uh, human function allowed to get so yeah, allowed to get um, to get the array of uh, the parcel. So sorry, that was the previous. Yeah, that's here. Uh, it is calculated with this formula. Zero uh, and uh, goes from zero to five. Zero corresponding to a low level of resilience, and five corresponding to a very high level of resilience. So uh, all, that pro all that procedure is repeated for each human function and for each fluid scenario considered. So here we consider five flood scenario, 0 0.1 meters, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1, and more than 1 meter. And finally, we get uh, this table um, of FRI, which gathers all the indexes cal calculated for all urban functions and for all scenarios of flood. And uh, we, we use that table to display the FRI uh, of each parcel in this uh, flood GIS. Uh, we export we export the H uh, table in Excel. Uh, 
and we put uh, the API uh, according to uh, the urban function. Uh, you can see uh, with the discharge uh, 3,500 uh, cubic meters per second and the urban function. Uh, more the API is high, more the building is resilient and uh, less uh, there is a risk. The downstream uh, IRA, IRA is more effective uh, airport particularly, and economical essential. So uh, now we can uh, compare uh, two scenarios with uh, 3,500 uh, cubic meters by second and uh, 5,000. Uh, so we, um, the airport uh, looks uh, to be uh, more impacted uh, in the se second uh, scenario. It went from uh, FRI uh, 3.08 uh, and uh, to uh, 2.13. Uh, uh, let's, uh, let's look more precis precisely. Uh, the water depth um, is uh, more important uh, in the in the in the 5,000. Uh, it went from uh, six. 60 uh, centimeters to one meter for the aircraft, uh, for example, in average. So no discussion. Um, so to finish, I would like to to underline the applicability of such a map. So the uh, uh, the FRI as uh, an assessment of flood resilience uh, in urban areas uh, can be a helpful a helpful tool um, for decision making and urban planning. Especially, uh, this value can be used to evaluate if some measures uh, have been functional or not. For example, if you built a shelter, um, you evaluate the FRI, the, the FRI before uh, having built it and after it. And the shelter should increase the accessibility uh, to urban human systems, so the FRI should <coughs> increase in the area. Uh, and finally, this tool could, uh, could help to, to raise awareness to, to flood risk among, among key stakeholders uh, by presenting brochures, short public presentations, um, creating internet portals with some useful information on resilience like FRI. Thank you. Okay, we have time for questions, comments, Elena, you want to ask? If you get comments on this. Oh, well, a uh, very nice presentation. I may say that uh, previous years we had uh, a similar questions, but we had the wrong results. So now this makes sense. Um, yes. <laughs> well, my question is uh, Did you consider uh, calculating flood resilience index for the bigger scale? You know, the big metrics that you had, for example, when you don't have the building level data? Uh, no, we didn't. What was the reason? Uh, actually, we didn't have enough time to do it. So, we did the, the first scale. Okay, just the first scale. Yeah. Can you go to the to the slide where you have two maps? Uh, not that, uh, that, this one. This one? Yes. Uh, I know that you use this, the, the, the same domain, but when you present it here, it doesn't look like uh, on the left you have less buildings than Correct. on the right. Yes. Um, it was just a cropping issue, or...? So it's not the same. Uh, can you be more easy, because he, he made this... It, it, was just, it was a cropping. Okay. I think it was a cropping, yes. Okay, then. Because yesterday when we looked, it was the same. Okay? <laughs> Okay, so the document changed from, uh, from yesterday to, to today's presentation. Same comment on, on this map. Uh, I think that would be useful to have a third map which is showing what has changed because it's very, very difficult to understand. Also because you have used the red as being the more resilient. In a normal way, it's supposed to be the less resilient. Yeah. Okay, so when you see a lot of red and we see a majority of red, 
green. Yes, it should be green. So the normal situation is you, you reverse the fruits, the fruits now, uh, because the red is supposed to be uh, the, the places that we accept that, of course, it's, uh, it's done. But it would be useful to show variation, a third map, which is a variation between stage one, stage two, and then you understand how it's, uh, how it's changing. Question on this one? No? No? Okay, good. Thank you very much. Let's move to the, to the last one then.